In just a few weeks, I'll have my first all up launch and landing attempt of the Scout E rocket. And this is different than Echo. We're really doing it this time. Um, this is a bottom half of one of the development pieces for Scout E. We've got a new set of landing legs. We've got a new launch pad. The GPS aided navigation on Ava will be used and we've got throttle control now. It's happening. I'm making this work one way or another. And so in preparation for that, I've got a couple videos coming out and what I've changed here. And today we're gonna focus on just the launch pad. I built this launch pad in early 2018. It's made of a wood base with an iron flame trench. It's good for both single core and triple core rockets, usually with airframe diameters of 66 or 74 millimeters. Let's start off by talking about the launch clamps. The job of launch clamps at the model scale is to keep the rocket safe and upright on the launch pad before it's time to go and then get the heck out of the way when it's time to launch. On the right, we have the servo to actuate the clamp to either engage it or let it go. The servo is connected directly to the clamp arm, which hinges around a strut in the lower left. The real elegance here is that the retraction motion also closes a hood on the clamp, which was intended to protect the clamp from the rocket exhaust. The upper strut connects to a point on the clamp hood, and since the hood is hinged at the bottom, the retraction motion closes it. Now the problem with that design is that it doesn't hold up well in the case of high static friction, which means that if the rocket is firing the motor, pushing against the clamps, and the clamps try to get out of the way, it's difficult for them to get up to speed and get out of the way if there's a lot of force pushing up from that motor. Depending on your current supply and the strength of your servos, you might not be able to pull all four clamps out of the way, and if you can't do that, you're gonna get a pretty bad day. Overall, you could fix this design in a bunch of different ways. Higher current servos, higher current supply, overvolt the servos if that's who you are as a person. I got really sick of that design because the launch clamp covers, while they look really cool, don't actually do much. All of the rocket exhaust, and especially the stuff that gets released from ammonium perchlorate when you fire it, uh, corrodes the crap out of stainless steel. Yes, even stainless gets crazy rusty when you fire a lot of APCP motors near it. Now let's talk about the new design. And before we do that, I wanna give a bunch of credit to Rob from T-Zero Systems, another great rocketry channel, who came up with this design or at least implemented it in this way. I asked him if it was okay if I could rip off his design and he said it was cool. So thanks Rob. Let's talk about the pros and cons for these clamps. The pros, it's crazy simple. Love how easy it is to just knock that pin out of the way. Pro, no static friction. The clamps just open up, and even if they don't open up, as long as that pin is out of the way, the rocket will push them open or the spring will retract them open. They want to be open. Pro, low actuation force, and especially because the servos get moving a little bit, they have a tiny bit of momentum in the gearbox, and they can just knock that pin out of the way with almost no force, even when the rocket is thrusting really hard against them. Pro can retain really tightly against the pad. Once again, because there's no static friction problem and we're actuating up and away from the rocket, we can clamp down very tightly on the rocket. There's a little bit of wiggle here you can see, but this is much better than the two to four millimeters of clearance that we had on the old launch clamps, which would let the rocket rotate back and forth a bunch. And that is not great for a rocket that guides itself with an inertial measurement system that needs to calibrate on the pad. Okay, pro, what else? The clamps connect to each other, and that's just a simple thing that you could do with any launch clamp, but I'm gonna put it on the pros column because that I, I did, I'm making the video, I make the rules. Okay, let's talk about the cons. It's single use. Once these clamps actuate, they can't actuate back on their own, at least with this design. There are plenty of ways you could incorporate that, but with the design I have here, when they get out of the way, they're done. They've done their job and they can't go back. Con, cannot safely be used with ammonium perchlorate motors. 
Here's the thing, when Scout E launches for all of these next launch tests, we're using exclusively black powder motors. Ammonium perchlorate motors are pretty hard to light. You don't get it every time, and in fact, during the sprint program, I found them nearly impossible to light on the first try, which means that if these clamps open and the motor doesn't light, this rocket could tip over. Now, black powder motors, which again, we're using exclusively for the Scout program, Black powder motors will light when you look at them the wrong way. So I have no concern about needing to get these clamps back in place. When I earlier mentioned that this is a downgrade from the older clamps, that's what I'm talking about. This can't fly ammonium perchlorate motors. I don't care. I make the rules. I'm only flying black powder. The last con on our pros and cons list is that all of the parts are exposed, very obviously, but this is gonna rust really quickly and parts are gonna have to be replaced more often. This is actually a pro kind of in itself, which means that it's very easy for me to spot if something is wrong. I can see every part of the motion of the clamp. I understand exactly what's going on. When you have clamp covers that you have to remove to observe, you don't actually know the state of your launch clamp until you take that cover off. And if that cover is even a tiny bit difficult to do, you're gonna be de-incentivized to take the cover off and check out what's going on. So. I find that the cost of replacing these things every few months is totally worth it for me to have a lot more confidence in how they work and what the state of the system is. In addition to replacing the lodge clamps, I also replaced the flame trench with a few modifications. The flame trench is made out of one inch diameter iron piping, and if you wanted to do something that wouldn't rust, you could use aluminum, you could use a bunch of different metals. Iron piping is really easily accessible to me. Um, so are a few other metals, but it's just at the hardware store and I don't mind replacing this every now and then when it gets a little rusty. I set up the flame trench in the same way as before, which means it can support either single core or triple core launches. I did change the exhaust ports for this though, and we'll see it on the first test of Scout E, but I'll just tell you about it now. Instead of the exhaust coming out both ports on the side of the rocket, which is cool, it's like the Proton launch setup. Uh, I actually am sending all of the exhaust out of the left side of the pad here, and the reason for that is that for all of these Scout E tests, when we launch, we have a small pitch over program that sends us down range. When we look at it on the camera, it'll be over to the right, and then the rocket's gonna land to the right of the pad. So when we launch, I'm sending all of the rocket's exhaust out to the left so that it gets out of the way, and when we come in for a landing, there's not a bunch of smoke from our launch in the shot. Next up, I removed the old launch computer from the pad. I built this thing in a fit of tremendous frustration last summer after the old impulse launch computer kept failing for reasons that I couldn't quite figure out. I didn't know it at the time, but as it turns out, the humidity at the launch site was killing the launch computer. And I, this is a thing I really should have figured out earlier, but I should be conformal coding all of my boards. I live in Tennessee and especially in the summer, it gets crazy humid. Humidity is what killed the last flight of Sprint as well. So now that I'm conformal coating my boards to protect them from the elements, I could put Impulse back into use. I'm glad to be using Impulse again just because it's much more full featured than the other launch computer I was using with continuity detection and better circuitry in general. As long as that conformal coating holds up, we should be good. And I have a set of humidity tests coming up for both Ava and Impulse where we're gonna really put it through, uh, we're gonna kind of put it through hell in terms of humidity. Uh, and make sure that the computers can stay on and functional. After cleaning it, I repainted the launch pad with a high heat tolerant matte black paint. I also took this opportunity to sand down some of the more rough surfaces on the pad for a nicer finished look. I cut new U-bolts down to size to attach to the flame trench, and then I mounted the trench to the bottom of the pad. For the clamps, I ended up painting some of the parts red and yellow for a more interesting look. Legitimately no reason for this here. I just thought it kind of looked nice and it kind of has like a Lego vibe to it. I don't know, I like it. Finally, I mounted the clamps onto the center of the pad and then mounted and wired up the impulse launch computer. And so that's it for the launch pad. Hopefully it works well for our first launch, which is coming up once again in a few weeks. I said that landing test would come back in August and as with any good rocket project, it is delayed. If you want to watch this first all up launch and landing live and any other landing slash big tests that I do, um, I stream all of those live for the people who support the project on Patreon. You can click the link down in the description to check that out. I've got a video coming out soon on the Ava flight computer and then maybe one or two other things before we're ready to do another launch and landing. Thanks for the patience during the downtime on this channel after uh, the whole sprint program. Really excited to do the launch and landing stuff again. Thanks for watching. Thanks for hanging out. My name's Joe Barnard. May your skies be blue and your winds be low.